critical files, uh, co uh, company documents, official documents on the internet as well. Right? How many of you use Dropbox? So many, right? If, uh, I'm sure you never put any company, company document on Dropbox before, right? Yeah, I believe you. <laughs> so there again you go, right? It's, it's cloud storage and you have used it and you say, oh no, the cloud is insecure. So go back and think carefully, you know, is the cloud that insecure, right? In fact, there is safety in numbers in the cloud, right? I hear of government agencies and, and corporates, you know, putting stuff in the cloud and people can't find it, right? The guys that secure the cloud today are professional IT companies, people with lots of resources and, 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 and manpower. But if you are securing your own network today, which is a private network, what are you depending on? You're probably depending on a limited number of people with limited skill sets, knowledge, products, solutions to secure your private network today. And true, I mean, it's so true that there are more, you know, you know I, I track the number of websites, networks that are hacked every month. And I can tell you there are millions of small, medium-sized companies that are hacked, right? The big ones, when they get hacked, oh, it's big news, right? But those are far and few, right? So I, I'll tell you a little bit of my, my, my company as well as my involvement with CSA. Um, Trend Micro is, is uh, the largest pure play security provider today. Most of our uh, highly respected competitors have either been merged or sold, right, to other companies. Uh, another thing that you may want to know is that Trend Micro uh, is one of the very few security vendors that uh, originated from Asia, this part of our world. Um, so that's something that is quite unusual about it. Uh, according to market surveys uh, by IDC TechNavio, we are the market leader in server virtualization as well as cloud security today. Uh, we deliver some of the top ranked security solutions. Uh, this is not what we say, but this is according to independent reports as well as magazines such as SE Magazine, uh, NSS Labs, for example. Uh, we are also a very partner-friendly company. Uh, we don't run a professional service practice that will compete with your risk assessment business. All right? So we, we concentrate on offering good solutions uh, to secure virtualization in the cloud. Um, we don't bring in our consulting team and compete with you at the end of the day. So this is uh, one area that, we, that differentiates us. Another thing that I'm uh, also... Uh, Pleased to inform you is that we are we just announced uh, our founding partnership of CSA APAC um, at the RSA conference uh, in February March this year. Uh, this is a historic partnership uh, because we believe in the work that CSA done has done and is continuing to do. Uh, we recognize that the CSA is probably the most influential uh, association or organization in the world. With a, with a complete dedication to uh, cloud security. And that falls pretty much, very much in line with what we're trying to achieve here at Trend Micro. The other thing that uh, I'm also happy to announce is that uh, Trend Micro has uh, received the first CSA Industry Leadership Award. As you can see, there's a very nice photo of Jim Revis, all right, who spoke to us this morning uh, with my CEO this morning. This is a huge event. You know, what we are seeing here today, here in Hong Kong, is just a preview of things to come. All right, so at the CSA summit in, in the US in February, March this year, uh, I think we had a room about for about 1,000 people. But, you know, I think probably 2,000 people turned up, right? And I think we had to turn people away, right? Unfortunately, right? So there's tremendous uh, interest and support that the CAC is getting. Um, and I'm glad that you are here today. Uh, please look out for more stuff from this uh, organization. Some of the other things that we are doing in terms of our partnership with CSA is we are, we are also trying to help, you know, from a trend micro's perspective, different research working groups such as the virtualization working group, mobile, cloud data governance, top threats, international standardization, innovation, as well as some of the joint events like Direction and CloudSec. Um, CloudSec is probably coming, it's an it's a industry event for cloud security, uh, and it's probably coming to Hong Kong uh, later part of this year, so look out for it. I'm going to talk about securing your journey to the cloud now. Um, 
most of us here will probably not be able to say that we are 100% in cloud now. How many of you are 100% into cloud? Right? I'll be surprised if anybody puts up their hand here. Right? Most of you are probably into some sort of a physical environment. You're still using the good old you know, Microsoft, Linux, you know, uh, Solaris, and all that stuff. Still running on dedicated servers. Um, some of you are, or rather many of you are probably have already embraced virtualization, which is one of the best things that has happened to the IT industry, uh, to uh, increase your efficiency in terms of the way you operate your data centers, in the way that you can, you know, um, increase efficiency, maximize uh, productivity, you know, by allowing you to install more stuff, you know, on existing platforms. And, and, and even at Trend Micro, you know, we helped some of our one of our largest financial companies. Uh, it was right after the Lehman Brothers crash and they were in financial trouble, right? So they had 13 data centers. And guess what happened, right? They embraced virtualization like never before <laughs> to cut costs and they reduced 13 data centers to three data centers. Can you imagine that, right? And I think as we move on to the cloud, uh, we, will we will produce a different set of challenges. So some of the stuff that we are seeing here is, you know, Trend Micro is not just about securing customers. Uh, some, how many of you know about global payments? I see people nodding their hands. You don't work for them, right? Nobody wants to put out their hands, okay? Global payments is, uh, was a credit card processing company, right? So they process credit card transactions and Unfortunately, they were attacked, you know, very unfortunately, they were attacked uh, and probably about 1.5 million credit card numbers were stolen or exposed. And to make matters worse, right, they were terminated by Visa, right? This goes to show the importance of data security, right? No longer are the days where data is stolen and you say, oh, it's okay, you know, that's... Uh, Let's go for beers tonight, cry over it, and it's over, all right? It's starting to hurt businesses. When you lose stuff on the internet, it could be devastating to your business. The other thing that uh, I want to share is that at Trend Micro, we are also not just securing our customers, but we are taking, uh, we're taking uh, cybersecurity to the next level, which is really helping and working with law enforcement agencies such as the FBI, the Estonian police, and we took down the biggest cyber criminal syndicate in history, and it was called, uh, it was called Operation Ghost Click. We took down a syndicate called S-Host, E-S-T-H-O-S-T. -E uh, S-Host uh, uh, was originated from Estonia, uh, but they were operating pseudo data centers in New York and Chicago, right? But what they were doing was they were doing uh, cyber jacking, you know, if you pay them money, they will change the ads on the, on the internet, Right? If you don't like your competitors, you change their ads. Right? They were stealing data and all that stuff. Right? And, and just to let you know how big assholes this was, it, it infected something like 4 million devices worldwide. Right? They had a command and control center that could control up to 4 million devices. And we took it down. Right? So the important thing is that it's not just about telling you about how, how scary you know, security is. It's also about taking down the bad guys, right? And I think we need to do more of that, okay? Another thing that I want to share with you is that, as you can see on the left-hand side, there is a list of, uh, I won't say famous, but notorious hackers, anonymous, anti-sec, last sec, WikiLeaks, you know them, all right? They've been creating a name for them, for themselves, a bad name. But ultimately, the agenda is about stealing data, and at Trend Micro, we track an underground economy as well. And in that underground economy, we put dollar values to different pieces of data that is stolen. It ranges from $1 to $3 for US-based credit card number. <laughs> I don't know about Hong Kong-based credit card numbers, but $1 to $3. And it goes up to uh, $85 for 2,500 Gmail accounts credentials. I, I can't put a figure if some Hong Kong national state secrets are stolen, right, it's probably worth a lot of money. Uh, but 
the underground economy is well and alive. It's moving, it's well and alive, and things are happening. So my question to you this, this afternoon is, where is your data today? Is it in PCs, desktops, mobile devices, hybrid clouds, public clouds? Where is it today? I think a speaker earlier on talked about uh, data that could travel. And that is so true. Data is traveling. As soon as you, you know, put something on the internet, that data gets replicated almost immediately to other data centers in the world. Right? As you are traveling in that journey, you will realize that there are different issues in terms of your journey, whether you are moving from physical or to virtual or to cloud, different issues. But in each of these, uh, I would say, milestones or phases as you are journeying to the cloud, you want to realize that, okay, what's your objective when you're in a physical environment? In a physical environment, you want to reduce complexity. Right? You do not want to be managing too many different types of products, too many types of devices. That's going to kill you. Right? You, want, you, you want to go for your weekends. Right? It's going to kill you. The other thing is that in a virtual environment, you want to increase efficiency. In a cloud environment, you want to deliver agility. You want to be as agile as possible, especially when market conditions change. All right? In good times like this, you know, I believe the economy is still doing well in Hong Kong. People will buy as much as they want, right? But what happens when the economy goes south? Can you sell the things that you have bought? Right? Can you downsize your software and hardware? Return it to the vendor. You can't, right? So it's important that as you are moving to the cloud, there is a different set of challenges and you want to be agile. What is important is that you need to have that integrated security perspective to managing your journey, whether you're physical, you're virtual, or you're cloud. Most of you here would agree with me that you have a hybrid environment. You will have a bit of physical, a bit of virtual, a bit of cloud, right? Do you have that consistent policy and management across the spectrum of PVC, physical, virtual cloud? This is so, some of the stuff that we are doing at Trend Micro is that we are offering uh, integrated security, all right? Um, I know some of you believe in best of breed, right? Just buy the best firewall, buy the best IDS, IPS, buy the best uh, web application provider, buy the best antivirus, and then you try to manage it all yourself, all right? That's fine if you have the resources, but if you do not have the resources, and we have, when your CIO, CTO says, Sorry, uh, I got to cut your budget. What are you going to do? All right? You got all these fantastic products, but you can't manage them. It's difficult. All right? So it's important as well. And it also, another thing that's very important is that if you take best of breed, uh, I used to work for best of breed company, so I used to say, sing a different story, right? But if you take the integrated approach, right, you may not have the best of everything, but from a company's perspective, if you've got that ability to ensure that there's consistent policy across uh, uh, your enterprise. How many of you have seen this movie, Minority Report? All right, you watch it not because Tom Cruise is handsome, right? I'll be surprised if any guys say he's handsome. All right, the ladies can say that. All right, but what is interesting about this movie is that there's this thing called uh, pre-crime, right? So the year is two zero four five, and Tom Cruise was acting as John Anderton. And John Anderton was the agent of the Department of Pre-Crime. And what he did was, uh, in the pre-crime unit, there, is, uh, there are three gifted people called pre -cocks. If you remember, they were lying in a, bo a body of water. And they could actually foretell crime before it happens. So whenever it happens, they start, sh start shaking away, and then signals will go out on the screens, and, and uh, John Anderton will then be activated, and then he will jump on the helicopter with his team, uh, with his SWAT team, and he flies to the crime scene, and he catches the uh, murderer before the murderer kills the victim. If you can remember that. So can you imagine if we can do that in security? We are able to stop a crime, a cyber crime, before it happens. All right? I'm talking about, those of you who know, right? I'm talking about zero-day attacks. Can you stop zero-day attacks before you happen? So there's a concept that uh, I alluded here, which is in the second column called virtual patching, which is very important because 
you know, there is a very important event every Tuesday, every second Tuesday of the month. What is that? Microsoft Tuesday, right? So Microsoft has just released a whole batch of uh, new patches uh, last, last week, right? Um, my question to you is this, have you rolled them out yet? All of them? It's a challenge, right? And it's not only a challenge uh, for some companies, it's a challenge across the industry because we've got to make sure that we are able to test and deploy those patches in time. But if you're not able to test and deploy them, what happens, right? So just example, right? The LDP vulnerability that was announced in April. Uh, MS-12020, which was targeting remote desktop uh, protocol vulnerability. Within hours, when, the, when Microsoft announced that bulletin, there was a video on YouTube, how to hack this vulnerability. If you follow step by step, you get that blue screen below, right? And we did that. We, we, my, my, my colleagues and I, we, we showed that to a large bank, one of the largest banks in, in the world. And we had the security team in the room and we showed them this and then we showed them the video Within a minute, we, they saw the blue screen. And then I asked them, is it easy? Yeah, it was very easy. Have you patched your systems yet? There was silence in the room. Silence, right? Have you all patched it yet? Same, silence in the room, right? It is not easy. So what you really need is some kind of uh, Divide uh, a solution that could allow you to do the virtual patching, to be able to stop and intercept the attack before it reaches your vulnerable systems, right? Another thing I want to share with you is uh, some of the challenges. I'm going to address two very important areas of uh, cloud security. Number one is virtualization, and number two is cloud security, uh, cloud data security. So some of the challenges that we see uh, in terms of virtualized security is number one, right? As you are creating different types of VMs, virtual machines in a virtual environment, right? You may be using VMware or Citrix or, or Hyper-V or even uh, uh, KVM, right? So different, different types of virtual machines in your network. Is there a possibility that the VMs could attack each other because of different levels of security? Another, is, another thing is that you know, are there instant on gaps? You know, you, you, as you create VMs in your organization, Sometimes you forget about some of the VMs. And then the moment you turn on your server, those VMs are not patched, not updated, and therein it presents a loophole in your system. Thirdly, there's resource contention, right? Many of you install agents, dedicated security agents in every single VM. If all the VMs are updating their antivirus at the same time, or they're scanning at the same time, you're gonna get calls from your customers. Why is your website so slow? Why is your email so slow? This is another issue. The solution is that you need to have agentless, uh, uh, agentless security that, that does not require an agent to be installed in the VMs and allow you to stagger the scans you know, across your virtual environment. Uh, in terms of complexity of management, as you are sprawling your VMs across your network, some of you have many, 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 many VMs in your company, right? How do you ensure that there's consistent security policy as well as management across your virtual infrastructure? Our largest customer at Tramicro, 8,000 VMs, right? How do you ensure that there's consistent policy across 8,000 VMs? Uh, how do you ensure that you do not have resource contention so that you can, you can maximize VM densities and reduce footprint within your data centers? Our largest customer at Tramicro, 300 VMs per server. 300 VMs, one server. And that's only possible through agentless security. What is the solution, as I said, you know, the security of virtual appliances to be installed in one of the VMs, you know, it allows you to have higher density, optimized resources, simplified management, as well as stronger security. There's a whole range of uh, solutions that are available within that uh, platform. Uh, I will talk about cloud security now, which is uh, the final part of my presentation. Why companies turn to the cloud, right? I think the earlier speakers have talked about it. I don't want to bore you with it anymore. I think you guys are all converts, right? I mean, anyone here says the cloud is no good, right? I think we're all converts, right? So I don't want to talk about it. But as, as the customers are concerned about the security, about the cloud, as, as it being your number one inhibitor, some of the things that I, I would say that 
some of my observations are that you know, they're not just concerned about the security, but more specifically, they're concerned about the security of their data in the cloud. It is the data that they're concerned about, right? I mean, everything else is a sideshow, right? Your firewall is breached, your router is breached, your OS is breached, you know, your applications are breached. So what? Ultimately, it's the data, because your data is your IP, your intellectual property, your corporate asset. And what is important here is that as you are investing in a cloud computing environment, more often than not, you'll be operating in a multi-tenant environment, especially if you are embracing the public cloud or even a hybrid cloud, right? In a private cloud, of course, you may have the whole cloud infrastructure all by yourself, but in a public cloud and hybrid cloud environment, you'll be sharing you know, resources with other tenants within the organization. So there's a mixed level of trust within a public cloud or a, a private cloud environment. In terms of data access and governance, that's something that you also want to be concerned about. You know, who has access to what within that cloud environment? And you have data destruction as well, right? That's something that I've always found it puzzling, right? You know, within your Windows PC or your Apple uh, Mac or whatever, there's a button that says delete. There's something on your keyboard that says delete, right? And when you press delete, is the data deleted? No. And when you empty your recycle bin, is it deleted? No. So when you are uh, embracing a cloud service provider and you decide to, you know, decide to switch cloud service providers, how do you ensure that your data is deleted? That is something that you need to think about, right? So there's a cartoon that we came out with, uh, a lady talking to her, her boss. The question is, do we really need to encrypt our data? Most of our communications are impossible to understand in the first place. <laughs> and it's not Chinese, <laughs> right? Do we need to encrypt our data? Of course you need to <laughs> encrypt your data, especially if it's very confidential, sensitive, you know, it concerns uh, your customers, it concerns national secrets, it concerns your R&D plans, right? I think everybody wants to know what's going to happen in Iran in the next few months, right? So this is important. Uh, what is the solution, right? So I talked about virtualized security, about how VMs are able to defend itself at the, uh, at the agentless way. But in terms of data protection, encryption is going to be important. And, we've, and, and the policy-based approach towards uh, key management is important as well. The sharing of keys, right? CSP is one key, you have another. The CSPs can encrypt your data in their environment, but you have the key to open it, all right? So even if the CSP comes to you and says, sorry, I'm going to up your rates for next year, you can say, bye-bye. It's okay, because the data is encrypted. They can't open it without the, the, without the, uh, the, the key that the customer holds. This is one solution that I can share with you. It's called Secure Cloud. Uh, and we are working with various vendors such as Amazon, Citrix, Dell, Eucalyptus, NTT, RightScale, and VMware already. These solutions are all pre-built into these service providers. So if you're using any one of them, uh, by all means, just request for it. All right, so this is kind of like my final slide. So one security model is important. The point is this. If the VM is insecure, don't let it travel. Don't even allow it to be created. That is very important. From a security perspective, as security managers, as security, uh, chief security officers, don't allow a VM to exist if it's insecure. Because the moment it's insecure, that opens a loophole into your network. All right, so that's all I have to share uh, for today. Uh, thank you for your attention. Uh, I'll be available uh, later on during the breaks or whatever. Um, yeah, thank you very much. So thank you, Ken, um, for giving us such an assurance to secure us all the way through to the cloud computing. So 